All right, so this is the mascot of Interchain. Um, he's here all night for pets. He enjoys belly rubs. Uh, and I'm here to talk about the Cosmos SDK and a bit about a dog. Um, and also how to, use, how, to, how to use the Cosmos SDK and uh, how to customize it. So who am I? So I was born in Portland, Oregon. I played basketball, skiing, taekwondo. Uh, currently, I'm the Cosmos SDK lead. I started out as DevRels, went to uh, engineering on Tendermint, engineering on the SDK, and now I help lead the SDK alongside region network. Um, I'm also the tech lead of the Builders program. If you don't know what the Builders program is, it's essentially a sort of incubator subsidized by the Interchain Foundation. So if you need help with architecture design using Cosmos SDK or just using Tendermint, um, entity construction, token issuance, token economics, all these things, it's kind of like encapsulated and it's offered for anyone using the Cosmos SDK, IBC, or Tendermint. Um, I also operate validators, so binary holdings delegate to us. No conflict of interest here. Um. <laughs> so what is the Cosmos SDK? So it's a collection of modules to build an app. I mean, actually, who here knows about the Cosmos SDK or who has used it? Just so I know. OK, well, you're going to hear it again. So, um, <laughs> so it's fully customizable. You can build practically anything with it. So right now, out of the box, you get a a uh, delegated proof of stake system, you get a governance system, you get inflation and account, and it's an account-based model. So we're kind of used to, in Ethereum, you have an account-based model, in Bitcoin, you have a UTXO-based model, and so it's very familiar and very easy to use alongside what we know in Ethereum. Well, what are the limits? Well, it's kind of limitless. You can kind of build whatever you want with it, and it's only getting easier to build with. And there's VMs, so if you don't like writing Go, like many people don't anymore, um, you can actually write in Solidity, the lovely language. You can write in Cosmwasm, which is actually Rust and TypeScript, or and soon to be Golang, Agoric uh, JavaScript. And so you can kind of, the, the limits aren't actually defined with what is in Golang, you can actually write in your own language that you prefer. Of course, with Ethereum and smart contracts, the problem is how do you do arbitrary execution? You end up writing a, a server that ends up calling a contract every X amount of minutes, times, blocks, whatever. Well, within the Cosmos SDK, you can kind of build this into your app chain. And that enables a lot more use cases that haven't been thought of within the Ethereum space. So what is Tendermint? Um, Kind of taking a step back from the Cosmos SDK and, and why I'm taking the step back will be defined in the next couple of slides. So what is Tendermint? Tendermint is only a consensus and networking layer. Uh, it provides instant finality, low, low block times. You can do large validator sets. There's this notion of 100 validators, 150 validators within the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, well, these numbers are entirely arbitrary and you can go a lot higher than that if you want. But of course, you trade off latency and block times in that scenario. Tendermint was originally designed by Jay Kwan, then later on Ethan Buckman. And in those scenarios, the vision was already always to have Tendermint Core as a library, as a consensus library. And what this means is you have modular layers. You can swap out mempools. You can use different validator keys. You can even swap out the consensus. So Tendermint Core uses Tendermint, the consensus algorithm. I know it's very confusing. Um, if you want to make it more confusing, there's also a company named Tendermint. Um, <laughs> so, um, so then it's like very free and very able to actually develop what you want. There's even examples of using different layers of Tendermint with different consensus layers underneath. So why did, I, why did I bring up Tendermint in the Cosmos SDK when I'm only supposed to be talking about the Cosmos SDK? Well, what is Tendermint? It defines blocks and validators. And it, these blocks are spread around the, uh, the P2P system. And then the state machine, in this scenario, the Cosmos SDK is only, has only the notion of application data, so accounts, balances, staking, governance, and things like this. And then there's this middle layer called the ABCI, the Application Blockchain Interface. And essentially what this is, this is a protobuf based service um, that essentially you can write your state machine, which in this scenario is the Cosmos SDK, in any language you want, and you can define your state machine without having to worry about the consensus and networking layer underneath. The consensus and networking is notoriously the hardest part of these systems, and then you don't have to worry about that and you can build your own application layer. 
Some examples of people building their own application layers are Penumbra, Anoma, Nomic, and o Oasis, and the list really goes on. So it's really freeing in what you can build. You're not only limited to the Cosmos SDK and what the Cosmos SDK offers. So now taking a step up, so the Cosmos SDK and how it works. So you have this base app. Um, so the base application is essentially the foundation of the Cosmos SDK. It essentially interacts with all the modules. And so when you pass a transaction or a message to the Cosmos SDK or um, submit a transaction, then the message handling is actually routed from Tendermint to the base app, and then base app choose where, chooses where to send the transaction. Alongside message handling, there's query handling. Query handling, essentially, when you're querying historical state, when you're querying current state, it routes it to the correct store. Second, thirdly, uh, what base app also handles is storage. So it's like when you're interacting with the chain, when you're querying, when you're writing, to, uh, writing a transaction to the chain, you're essentially saying, telling base app to like, write it to the underlying store. In this scenario, we have a Merkle tree called the IVL, and in this, um, this is all abstracted for the end user into the base app layer, and all you have to worry about is writing the module un until you get to a more complex use case. So what can you build today? Well, touched on earlier that it's really limitless in what you can build, but some ideas are oracles, DEXs, money markets, shit coins, interchange services, mix next, zero knowledge, and really anything that you can imagine. The only thing that you're limited is in basically time and time in developing it, um, <laughs> and time in developing it, and potentially if you want to use a different language. Um, so today, how can you build it? Well, the two highest touch points in the Cosmos ecosystem are Golang, for if you're writing a native Cosmos SDK module, and the second one is Rust. Rust is coming through the realm of Cosmosm. Um, Cosmosm is kind of a smart contracting uh, layer, kind of like the Ethereum EVM. And in this scenario, people, uh, you can write the Cosmosm smart contract to call directly into the native modules of the Cosmos SDK. On top of that, there are examples of people removing, let's say, 80% of the modules within the Cosmos SDK and writing everything as a smart contract. So I, I believe T grade wrote their proof of existence as a smart contract in Cosmosm. And it calls directly into Tendermint and does a validator set updates and everything. So you're not only limited to Golang. So on clients, this actually, I was just talking to Dennis about this. They were one, uh, Ignite, previously Stargate, was the, the first user of Cosm.js, and they, uh, they really felt the struggles of the early days of the JavaScript story. So you can interact with chains via Cosm.js. It's kind of a built-in toolkit for everything the Cosmos SDK. There's also other things like uh, work from Cosmology and Dan that is being used to generate uh, clients for chains. Then inside the Cosmos SDK, there's a client package that you can use Golang to interact. So if you write your server or your key management system in Golang, then you have a client package that you can use. Um, on top of that, within the Rust realm, since realm Rust is becoming more and more uh, a thing, then Cosmos Rust is another place where chains can interact with, uh, with Cosmos SDK chains. At the underlying layer, everything is more or less JSON RPC and gRPC. Everything is protobuf as encoding. There's still some remnants of Amino in the code base that's used for signing, but for the majority, it's all JSON RPC and gRPC. Within, if you see the REST API, the REST API, REST API is essentially a wrapper around gRPC. So, um, yeah, so uh, you can do decentralized start. So this was the important feature in the early days of Cosmos when the hub really launched was how do we do decentralization from the start? And so this was a huge, huge ask. Um, and the Cosmos Hub and Zaki were, were not willing to launch without it. Um, and if you look at other chains and different ecosystem and different frameworks, you kind of see like a centralized point of start and then decentralization later. Um, and within the Cosmos SDK, you can kind of start as a decentralized start while it's a bit of a, a bit of a headache, um, but you just got to have fun and drink enough to not make it a headache. Um, 
Of course, painless upgrades. Um, this, this slide's actually meant for Evmos. I don't know if Evmos, if anyone from Evmos is in here. Um, they've had some rough uh, upgrades, um, but it's supposed to be painless. And essentially, it's painless for the validators and more painful on the developers. Um, but at the end of the day, we're not developing software for the developers, but for the end users. And so you can essentially just produce a upgrade in the sense of doing, uh, giving a governance proposal, the validators voting on it, they will essentially audit the code base and then later on upgrade if they want to or do they not or they um, or they choose not to. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's painless, uh, I would say. Yeah. So oh, I forgot to move this one down. So some of the known apps in the in the Cosmos ecosystem are here. So we have Nomic, Akash, Celestia, the Cosmos Hub, Terra, Juno, Injective, and really the list kind of keeps on going. And every every week we're having new chains launch in the Cosmos ecosystem. And I want to say it's like it's not essentially because of the software is amazing. Like I'm I'm the Cosmos SDK project lead, but I, I, I don't want to say like the Cosmos SDK solves all problems, but it's really like when you're joining the Cosmos ecosystem, you're buying into a community and into the support of everyone launching chains because we're all here to like build a better ecosystem. And so you're getting Crypto.com, you're getting Oasis, you're getting ICF, Osmosis, everyone coming in and helping you. And that's the, really the thing that you're buying into when you're choosing Cosmos to build a Cosmos-based chain. Um, Okay, that's the last slide. I did forget to put a slide in on the Interchain Academy. So essentially, when you're coming to the Cosmos ecosystem, it's a lot to take on. If you're coming from the Web 2 world or even if you're coming from the Web 3 world, it's a lot to take on to learn what is a validator, what is Tendermint, what is the Cosmos SDK, how to write a module, what is it to think about determinism and all these things. And so for that, there's been a, an academy developed where you can apply and learn about how to write a Cosmos SDK chain, how to deploy a chain, how to do an upgrade, and all these things that are very essential to like starting a chain. And from the Interchain Academy, there's been, very many, there's been a few avenues. So I believe the first cohort just wrapped up, and the few avenues have been either a chain launch, a te the teams hiring directly from the cohorts, or um, new startups coming uh, from the, from the Interchain Academy. And this is really like what we're trying to do is like bring new people to the ecosystem and also just make it a lot easier for them to develop and build a, their own Cosmos-based chain. Um, I can post, uh, or Valet can uh, post a link to the Interchain Academy later on. I forgot to put it up here. But uh, yeah, hopefully I didn't go too fast. But uh, are there any questions? No questions? One. He's a year and a half. Yeah, he's still a puppy. We can. Duke. See? Big stretch. Yes. Because of how they've modified their underlying store and how they've modified their chain away from the Cosmos SDK, there is an effort to bring them back into the realm. And the idea is to bring them onto the IBC, into the IBC world. Um, the only problem here is like Binance Chain actually helps secure the Binance Smart Chain and most of the user activities on the Binance Smart Chain. And so it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a, a weird misnomer that there's a Binance Smart Chain, there's a Binance Chain, and it's like you have to stake on Binance Chain, or you have to be a validator on Binance Chain to like secure the Binance Smart Chain. Um, so, but there, there is an effort to bring them into IBC and make them IBC compatible. Yeah, so Polygon's another user. Um, they kind of like hide behind the fact that they use the Cosmos SDK and Tendermint, and they're developing their own framework to build um, applications. And with them, it's a bit, I think it's also of the same realm where they have like the Tendermint and the SDK chain help for validation, but the actual like state transitions are happening on like a different um, chain. But in this realm as well, they can um, either add IBC directly into the EVM, and this is just a rewrite of basically the IBC protocol in Solidity, which has already been done by the data chain team, and they would just need someone would need to deploy that 
and then they'll be able to start using it right away. So, oh, I'm supposed to be repeating the questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, explain how the organizations work. Um, so, once upon a time, we were all at uh, All in Bits uh, or Tendermint Inc. Um, and there was a bit of a turmoil where we all transitioned into other organizations um, where Interchain Gambaha was born, Strange Love was born, Inclusion, Informal, and many other entities. And so essentially now it's, um, it's kind of interesting because a lot of other ecosystems that we've talked to actually want to like start decentralizing their core development and we're actually telling them not to. Um, but for us it's, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of worked because we all started from a central point and we all like love each other, we're a big family and then we all separate into other organizations, but we all, we're essentially all on the same Slack. So essentially, Strange Love is kind of um, shooting for the, the red hat of Cosmos. So they have a, a, a big work on um, IBC, and so they have the IBC Go Relayer, um, the chain name service, and they're helping out on a bunch of IBC and Tendermint related things. Um, Interchain Gambaha focuses on SDK and IBC alongside the hub. Um, and the hub is shared with Informal. Informal focuses now on Tendermint and the hub. Um, who else is there? There's Occlusion, who kind of like covers everything. Um, honestly, like I, it's, I can't really explain it. <laughs> we all, it's, it, the best way to explain it is just like we're a big family and like we all love working with each other because it's always, it's so interesting. Like Sunny and Dave were part of the team at the AIB and it's like while they started Osmosis, we're still like every day talking to each other, bouncing ideas off of each other. Same with Zaki and Jack, like um, the IBC team, like everyone's like working together as though we are one company, just with different um, organizational structures, different legal structures. But um, if, so if someone were to try and replicate it, I, I, I don't think they could because the, the most important part for us was just like starting from a central point and also in Cosmos, the, the thing when people ask me, like, why am I still in Cosmos? It's like, for me, it's hard to explain. It was just kind of like the vision and the mission is like so strong from like 2017, 2014. And it was like just Jay and Bucky that it's like, it just kept everyone here. And that like vision and mission just keeps us together and makes us work together. And um, I, I, for me, I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> Tara, uh, the integration. Uh, look, he stood up too. <laughs> He's like, I lost a lot of toys on that day. Um, <laughs> um, what's happening with with Tara? Um, I I don't know. Um, they the, I believe they're reestablishing IBC connection with Osmosis and Juno. Um, I believe there's some uh, work to help fund the, the development. I think Notional is taking on that work on the Terra side to reestablish the connections um, or to enable governance proposals to uh, turn on the connections. Um, Osmosis and Juno like want it to happen. Um, and that's the latest I've heard on. It's been very, very quiet um, since, since about June. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the problem is like, I think there's like, for some reason, Luna C keeps surviving. Um, and now there's like 20 million Luna C, $20 million worth of Luna C on osmosis. And so they're trying to like help their end users like recover those funds. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm not, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Anything else? Adam 2.0, well, you're going to have to come to Columbia to find out because um, there's a big announcement on September 28th about Adam 2.0 and a bunch of launch partners. Um, all I can say, it's like super exciting. It's the next evolution of, of Adam. And like Adam was developed at a time where like none of this, what we're doing today was really thought about. And even like today when I talk to people, like of the early days in 2017, everyone was like, oh, that's a problem that's going to happen in 2021. We don't have to worry about that. And it's like, okay, like we're here now. Now it's, act now it's an actual problem. And so like the token economics and stuff like that, where people spend a lot of time today at the time of the Cosmos Hub launch was thought about, but it wasn't thought about as such a big thing. 
Um, and so it's like a whole revamp, and uh, I'm, I'm for one excited for it. So got to come to Columbia. Um, of existing existing zones or to to launch zones. Existing zones. Um, there's a couple that uh, are willing to like migrate um, because the a huge benefit is it changes your economic model. So you don't have to incentivize validators as much with inflation, and then you're basically if you don't have enough liquidity on osmosis or somewhere, then you're essentially just inflating your token to zero. Um, and so it allows, there's a few chains that I've talked to that are willing to like debate and like put up governance proposals um, in their ecosystems to like migrate to a shared security model um, with underneath the hub in order to greatly benefit their token, their token, but also allow them to focus and not have to worry about all this added overhead of launching and maintaining your own chain. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to say who and stuff like that because that's part of like the Atom 2.0 announcement. Yeah. It's actually Tenderman too. Um, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I my, my my focus is like shipping the Cosmos SDK and shipping um, and trying to like uh, assist Tenderman the best I can. And so it's who do I work for? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, wor I work for Interchain Gamba, huh? which is a, a subsidiary of the ICF. For how long? Um, TBD. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, which one was that? That was a Cosmosm on the hub, right? Um, I think Cosmosm will land on the hub. Like, um, I, I, I think, I think the proposal was um, poorly articulated. I was kind of like Cosmosm on the hub, but it wasn't like Cosmosm for X reason. Um, I think within the realm of like IBC alone, uh, like Wasm based light clients allow for greater up upgradability without having to coordinate chain upgrades. And so Cosmosm will land on the hub, uh, in my opinion. It's just a matter of time. And it just like, it has to be a more well defined scope of what Cosmosm means on the hub instead of like just Cosmosm on the hub. Um, so he's, he's going to stare at me for this one because he actually works at, on, at Parity. Um, but so I, I've coded on Substrate. I've coded um, and I work on the Cosmos SDK. Um, I'd say it's the Cosmos SDK is like a bottom-up approach and Substrate is a top-down approach. So in the Cosmos SDK, you have a very verbose way of writing modules. And it's some developers complain that it's like very poor UX, dev UX. But at the end of the day, it's like you know exactly what's going on. You know you, the, the downside here is like you're setting your keys, you're setting your prefix keys, you're interacting directly with the store. Like you know exactly what's going on when you define your app.go while it's like 600 lines of, uh, of Go that's like very confusing and very verbose. You know exactly what's going on. With Substrate, they, t they kind of took the top-down approach where it's like they abstracted everything via Rust macros. And so it's like you just define something and those macros expand into thousands of lines of code that you don't actually know what's going on. So you're kind of like trusting the developer to like, the de you're trusting the developer behind Substrate to actually write well-defined uh, macros and well-defined Rust code. And so it's, it's a different trade-off than that. When like, I talk to teams about like, uh, either using the Cosmos SDK or using Substrate, at the end of the day, you can build very similar applications with both. But, uh, but for me, the most important thing is like, what am I buying into? Like, I'm buying into an ecosystem. In which direction is the ecosystem going? How does the ecosystem interact with other ecosystems? And these things and these like, values for me mean a lot more from the tech. Like, tech is easy. Like, writing in Substrate, writing in Cosmos SDK, writing in Solidity. It's like it's a matter of time till you figure it out, but it's like more so the ecosystem and the community that you're like brought into is is what the, is the thing that will make you last. What new features are you shipping to the platform? Ooh, okay, so um, with ABCI 1.0, ABCI 1.0 is was previously called ABCI plus plus. So when 1.0, there's prepare proposal and process proposal. So right now in the Cosmos SDK, 
you, you, send an app, you send a transaction to the Cosmos SDK, and then um, it gets added to the mempool. Whatever gas you put, whatever fee you put on the transaction, it doesn't matter. It's at the back of the list because it's a FIFO list. With an app-side mempool, because, uh, sorry, because Tendermint does not actually know what's in a transaction. It's just an opaque byte blob. With, uh, with ABCI 1.0, we can do an app-side mempool. So now applications are uh, defining what, how they want to build blocks, how they want to construct block space, and how they want to do t uh, transaction inclusion. So that's like the, the biggest thing and the highest priority that's coming out in the end of October. Uh, we're revamping the store package, so the, the underlying storage. We're refactoring a bit right now. Um, me, Dave, Bez, like a bunch of people who work on the Cosmos SDK, Osmosis, Cosmosm, we're all firm believers that like we could easily get um, like five to 10x performance with just a minor revamp of the store package, which we're gonna do and like with the underlying tree structure. Um, so those are two things. And then on the dev UX side, there's been a big need for um, auto-generating CLI. So reducing the amount of boilerplate that you're, that you're writing for non-critical non features. So stuff like client interaction, CLI, gRPC queries and stuff like that is all gonna be auto-generated for you. Um, those are like the big three things. And like AppSide mempool, and auto CLI are kind of like the biggest things that like developers developers will feel, but the other stuff like storage, um, deterministic queries, and stuff like this is just kind of more so like providing guarantees to the developer on what they can do. So it's not as interesting for me. It's exciting, um, but for end developers, it's not much. Are we good? Okay, awesome. Thank you. Hope you have a good night.